Hello, my name is Tina from Victoria Designs. And if you like trains and steampunk designs, I happen to have the perfect kit for you, the Steampunk Trains Kit. Steampunk trains, train stations, suitcases, outfits, this kit has it all. With these printables, Alexander made a tutorial for you to create a tall skinny journal with the most beautiful embellishments. I recommend this tutorial for experienced crafters. Like always, you can use totally different printables and papers to create this project, just as you can use the printables from this kit to make many other craft projects. First, there will be a flip through of the journal and then Alexander will show you how she made it. If you'd like to see more of Alexandra's beautiful crafts and tutorials, just go to her channel. You will not be disappointed. The link is below. And if you'd like to make this project or other craft projects with the printables of this beautiful Steampunk Terrains kit, you can discover more information in our Etsy shop. The link is below as well. And now I give the word to Alexandra. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's Alexandra. My today's tutorial and video are dedicated to one of the new digital paper collections from Victoria Designs. It's called Steampunk Trains. If you like the papers, please um, check this kit as well as others in the Etsy store um, of Victoria Designs. I will post the link to it in the description box down below. So without further ado, that's the journal that I have created. It's a tall journal and it was my first time. Uh, making a journal of this size. I really like how it feels in the hands and I enjoyed the process of making it. Let me show you the cover a little bit closer and then we will also flip through the uh, pages of the journal together. That's the front cover. I have some metal gears in the front as well as some of the round epoxy uh, stickers paired with some die cut gears that I have created using gold foiled paper. I have added some um, words from one of the papers in the digital kit. Here I have cut out the image with this beautiful woman and packed it up with some craft cardstock to uh, make it more durable. And I have also turned this into a pocket, which holds uh, just two little tags from the paper collection that can, of course, be taken out. And again, that's the front cover of our journal. That's how the spine looks like. The choice of colors, by the way, was dictated by the color tones of the papers themselves. And I know that it's not um, a very obvious choice for <laughs> steampunk, but I felt like I wanted to have some uh, blues in it. And <laughs> that's how all the project came together with the blue spine and the blue um, closure for this journal. So uh, on the spine, which was created with uh, some cotton fabric, and I uh, painted the fabric with uh, blue acrylic paint. I have also stamped some uh, steampunk themed uh, images on the spine. The stamps that I have used are quite old and I don't know if you will have them in your stash or if you will be able to find any of those these days on eBay or um, Etsy maybe. I don't know, but in any case, I have uh, mentioned the uh, names of the stamps that I have used. So please forgive me if you can't find the same. I'm sure there are lots of other um, steampunk themed uh, stamps which still exist and can be purchased and if you will be working on something like that I'm almost sure that you might already have a few uh, usable stamp sets in your collection. That's the back. I love this page design with the piled up suitcases and the clock there. For the closure, this time I decided to use the 
um, magnetic snap button. I have quite a few of them and I rarely use um, these on any of my projects so this time I thought why not and um, I really like the character that this closure adds to the journal. So let's see what it has inside. Oh, by the way, that's how the top looks like and uh, the pages from the side and that's the bottom. I have a bookmark inside the journal that I'm going to show you once we uh, get to that page. So when we open the journal, that's how it looks. On the inside front cover, I have three horizontal pockets. Each one of the pockets holds um, different tags or uh, cut out pieces that I'm going to show you in a second. You can also see that I have quite a few uh, gold foiled um, elements in this journal. Almost each one of the pages will have those um, gears that I have die cut and glued down to the pages. I have also used some of the dies from my stash for uh, creating uh, different elements like for example this tag right here. I have used the papers from the digital uh, paper kit by Victoria Designs but this die specifically for example was by Elizabeth Crafts as well as this one and then I have also used some uh, Tim Holtz stamps as well as some others. Going back to the pockets that we have here, in the first one I have just two suitcases that I um, fussy cut out of one um, uh, of the papers from the kit. They're so beautiful, so cool. So both of these go here. In the second pocket I have a train and just a blank label that I might use um, later on. And then in the lower pocket I have that uh, long slide with some uh, die cut gears and the clock faces behind that acetate sheet uh, label which I have added uh, die cut number one as well as another die cut number one and that's the back. I also have just a tiny eyelet here in case I want to add any more uh, charms to the to the slide and here we have just a tag that was created with uh, craft cardstock tea stained uh, paper which I stenciled on and added some more uh, die cut gears and of course the cherry on top for this tag would be the spectacles from the paper collection. So that's what I have in the pockets. Now on the first page of the journal itself I have also stenciled and added some elements from the paper collection as well as that die cut gear. I have a pocket with this beautiful lady and I have also added this acetate tag. I don't think I show in the tutorial how I made it but it's basically two layers of acetate and if you want to know the tag measures six inches by three so there are two layers of acetate and this delicate die cut that I have in black is sandwiched between the acetate layers and then the rest of the pieces are glued on top and they're the same shape so you um, cover the back which in my case was just plain white so you cover the back of each element with another element on um, the uh, on the back side as well as these tags which come from the paper collection and I have just added some gold foiled accents here and there. I stitched around the edges of both uh, of the acetate 
layers and added an eyelet with a tie on top. So I really like how this one turned out. I have one more somewhere in this journal, but there are only two or maybe three of them. I really like how they turned out. So we keep on flipping through the pages. We have more uh, stenciling here and stamping. And as you can see, there are more of the uh, die cut gears there. On this page, I have stapled just a few plain tea stained uh, sheets and then added a strip of a leftover fabric that I had. I have also added a pocket which was included in the collection to the page behind this notebook. Here we have again stamping and a pocket with an absolutely gorgeous library card from the paper collection. I love how it looks. Then here we have again stamping and some uh, of the uh, fussy cut elements from the paper collection. Now here we get to the point where I want to say a few words about the journaling pages. They were not designed for this size of a journal. I decided to uh, go ahead and print the uh, smallest size of the pages which are included in the paper collection and use them one on top of the other in this tall journal so that I could really use um, the most of this paper collection, even though it was not initially designed for this format of a project. I hope this will give you some ideas as per how you can use other paper collections, even though you are not creating a standard um, size journal. The next page also has some stenciling and um, die cut elements alongside um, the uh, fussy cut out ones from the kit, some stamping here and there. Here I have uh, created a tuck spot using um, the train. Then on this page I have added some gold foil gears again. Here I have a tuck spot and this is a paper clip that I have created uh, using the circles from the paper collection. There are lots of them. If you are going to purchase it, you will see that there are lots and lots of circles. So I was uh, thinking about the way that I could uh, use all of them and that's what I came up with. So um, since I forgot to show it in that tutorial, um, the way of making these paper clips and seems like paper clips are kind of in fashion right now. I just wanted to show you how to make it. You will use two circles. They're of the same size and in my case these ones are um, two inches in diameter. I have already distressed the edges of them. And then here I have um, a standard size, I think it's called number one, uh, paper clip. And I have a piece of paper which is one inch wide by three inches long. So I scored it at one and a half on the long side to be able to uh, fold it in half like that. Now um, I will take one of the circles. Let's start with this one. Now I will take this piece of paper and add my paper clip to it. First of all, I'm going to apply the glue. Let's see, we'll start from the side which has the longer part of the paper clip. I will apply the glue to the uh, paper areas around the paper clip. Now, let's see, that's the top of our future paper clip. So I'm going to attach the paper piece like so, and then I'm going to uh, take my second circle so that it's ready. Uh, and I will apply the glue now to the remaining area on the paper strip. And also along this edge that will be 
the top and I will cover it with the second circle. Okay, just make sure that you press really nice um, either with your fingers or with the bone folder. We just want to make sure that everything is glued down together nicely. And basically our paper clip is now ready because we can just slide the paper between two circles like that. And this is how it will hold on the page. Okay, you can also use it, of course, separately from the journal and clip um, paper pieces together like so. Isn't that cute? I hope you will use this um, easy way of uh, creating paper clips for your other journals or for this journal that we will keep on flipping through. The next page looks like this. And I'm thinking now that maybe I should just flip through the pages and add some music. What do you say? If there will be some elements that I uh, will want to explain a bit more in details, I will stop the music and um, do that. So um, here we have, for example, before I add the music, we have a sliding um, buckle on top of the belly band which was included in the paper collection as well. So the way I did it, I just added a piece of paper around the belly band and then glued uh, the uh, circle element on top. So super easy, fun to use, adds uh, interest to the page. I hope you like it as well. Here is the bookmark that I have created. It was super easy to make. That's where I used um, those numerous circles which were included in the kit. So we have a ribbon. I had the gold ribbon here uh, and the texture of a ribbon was so that it was kind of hard to glue paper onto it. So I decided to, first of all, stitch some craft cardstock um, circles to the middle section of the ribbon so I could be sure that they will stay in place. And then I added the uh, punched out circles with the printed elements on top of each one of the sides of those uh, craft cardstock circles. That way I have stitching which hides behind these top pieces and they're securely attached to the ribbon 
and that's how it looks to finish off the tip here I have sandwiched it between the um, punched out circles of gold foiled paper and then I have added more circle elements on top and then this end of the ribbon is finished off with um, this element and a metal gear attached to it. So that's a nice add-on to this journal, I think. Let's keep flipping through the pages. On this page as well I have two elements which I have created using some of the dies from my stash. I have a tag and another long slide which was created in the same style as the one in the front. Here are both of them side by side. The back side is plain. So I have added both of those into the uh, pocket. And the pocket was created just by folding one of the journaling cards and gluing down the bottom edges to the base page. Super easy and I like how it looks. So that's the journal. I hope you like it. If you do, please continue watching the uh, tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me and see you soon. My tool journal will have three signatures in it and here I have already started to uh, build those signatures. The first signature will, um, as you can see, have seven tool pages and the size of each page in my case is 10 and 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter. I have printed the pages with um, white borders which I trimmed 
once everything was printed out and then when I added more uh, tea stain papers and crib papers uh, to my signatures I had to trim them down to the size of the printed ones so that all of them uh, look the same. This first signature for example will have seven pages and it will start with the tea stain paper then I will have um, the uh, printed page design from the kit then I will have the grid paper another tea stained page another one with the printed pattern on it and another grid page and another tea stained paper sheet so that's the first signature now it was easy uh, to print the vertical page designs on both sides and use them in building the signature. What about the journaling pages? This time I didn't print the regular horizontal journaling page designs, but I went to the smaller size where there were two pages per sheet, two smaller pages per sheet, and I went ahead and printed those also on both sides. You are also going to trim them down and these smaller pages I plan to incorporate between the tall pages in my journal. If you will print everything and you also will have three signatures in your journal, it means that each one of the three signatures will have four double-sided small journaling pages. So my plan is to uh, attach them between the pages like so. So if I have, let's say I don't have a um, designer paper on uh, either of those pages, so I will put the a small journaling pages in there and also in here and they will fit nicely one next to another like so and you're welcome to position them closer to each one or maybe uh, more to the top and the bottom of the signature but that's at least my plan and how I'm going to have them in the journal that I will construct together with you. So that's the first signature. Let me clip the pages together so that they don't go anywhere. Now the second signature will be constructed the same way. I have four double-sided small journaling pages and I have this time, I think, not two vertical uh, designer papers, but three. So my signature will start with the um, page from the kit, then I will have one tea stained paper and one grid paper sheet, then another page with the printed design on it and a tea stain paper and a grid paper and another printed one from the kit and the tea stained sheet. So now once we have that ready let's think where we can put our small journaling pages. I think they will be here and here and two more we can probably put between these pages like so and then the third signature will have again only two vertical printed pages and the rest will be the tea stained papers and the um, papers from the uh, notebook. 
Okay, and again, I have four smaller um, journaling pages that we will have to incorporate between our tool pages. Let's assemble that again the same way we did with the first signature. Like so. And then you just choose where you want to put the small pages. And I want to have them right here. And it's not important which designs you print where. They can be, of course, different from what I have in here. So that's the third signature. I have a template for uh, poking the holes. And this template, it is also 10 and 3 quarters of an inch long, the same length as the pages after I trimmed them down. And I will use five holes uh, pamphlet stitch binding method for attaching my signatures to the spine of the journal. So I have already marked the places for those five holes. And if you start to mark from one of the edges, uh, the holes will be at 7 8 of an inch, 3 and 1 8 of an inch, 5 and 3 eighths, 7 and 5 eighths, and 9 and 7 eighths of an inch. So that's just a template that I will use for uh, placing inside each one of the signatures and then poking the holes uh, in each one of the signatures the same way. Three of our signatures will be bound to the inner spine of the journal and here is the white cardstock piece that I'm going to use for that. The cardstock piece that I have here measures 11 inches long by four and a half inches wide. There are uh, flaps on each side of this piece and they're one and a half inch wide and then the um, space between the flaps is also one and a half inch wide. You can also see that this um, central area between the folds is scored at every one eighth of an inch and this way our spine will be more flexible when the journal is constructed. As you remember we had five holes marked in our template for uh, the binding of the signatures. Now on this piece we will also have to mark um, the places for uh, binding the signatures onto and for doing that I have made some measurements here so let me just tell you what exactly you will have to do. Uh, you will start by applying some markings on the long edge of this white cardstock piece and those markings will be at one inch three and a quarter, five and a half, seven and three quarters, and ten inches. And I usually like to uh, duplicate those um, tick marks on the opposite long side of the paper so that later on I can put my ruler um, and sort of connect two of those tick marks and then you will be able to uh, draw a line just in the um, uh, middle area of the cardstock piece, right here on the scored lines, which are one eighth of an inch away, one from another. And that way you will be able to mark with um, little dots the places where each one of the holes will be. If you want to measure the first set of holes and there will be five of them so the first set or the first line of holes for binding the first signature will be one and seven eighths of an inch away from the edge of the cardstock piece or if you want to count the uh, scored lines on the spine only this first set of holes will be marked right on top of the third score line. Right on top of the third score line. So one, two, three. And I'm counting only the score lines which 
have not been turned into folds like these first ones that we have used for creating the flaps. So the second uh, set of holes will be at two and a quarter of an inch away from the long edge of our cardstock piece or again from the previous set you will again count one two three score lines and put your mark in there and then the third set of holes will be two and five eighths of an inch away again from the same long edge of the cardstock or again one two three score lines away from the uh, previous ones okay so once you measure everything you will have three sets of your five holes marked on the white cardstock piece and we'll use a poking tool to poke them just one second later before poking the holes i want to cover this side of the paper with a piece of um, fabric and you are welcome to use either muslin which is what I'm using or cotton I'm going to attach it using glue stick my piece is about let me tell you it is about three inches wide and you can see that it is uh, longer than the cardstock piece and that's because I want to be able to fold it over the edges of the paper in the back and this is how it's going to look like and in terms of the width it's important to cover this whole middle area of our spine and then have a little bit of the fabric beyond the uh, fold lines on uh, both sides of the spine so I'm going to apply the glue now I'm trying to center it evenly from both of the long edges of the paper. I have ironed this piece already and I'm ready to fold the short edges over the paper. This is what we have so far. Let's just refold the flaps on the sides. It will be easier for us to see where these side flaps are. I also like to use my bone folder for that. Now at this point I uh, like to add some stitching along the top and the bottom edges of the uh, piece that will be used for binding the signatures onto so i will do that and get back to you like that don't forget to pull the uh, threads to the back side of your piece and tie some double knots i also think that i'm going to sew right on top of that fold line to make sure that the fabric stays glued down exactly where i need it to be and I think that for that, I will use my uh, friction pan. And first of all, I will make sure that I um, create a guideline just for, for myself so that I can see where I'm stitching. Okay, so you can either uh, just fold your paper while you hold your ruler right next to that fold and then mark with a pen or you can uh, measure again but I think this is actually easier so I have that line marked I'm going to sew along the line and then use again my iron and erase the um, line of the friction pen and this is how it looks now both of these pieces and I mean the fabric and the paper are bonded nicely together we can poke our holes now I will flip this piece to the back so that I can see where we previously marked each one of the holes and I'm going to poke them through I 
Now I can see them um, on this side of the paper piece as well. And I think we are ready to uh, poke the holes in uh, the signatures using our template. I will clip the pages of my signature together and also before uh, poking the holes I want to make sure that the little pages haven't moved. I can clip everything back together and then I'm just going to hold the template and the set of my pages together and poke through the holes that I have previously marked just like that okay and then we will rotate the whole stack of pages and poke two more holes on this side okay now you can either poke all the holes in all of your signatures or you can bind each signature one by one which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the five hole pamphlet stitch as I mentioned before. I use thick upholstery thread for attaching my signatures to the spine and I like to take two lengths of my pages with a bit of an extra. So I have about maybe five extra inches, five or four extra inches on each side, both at the top and at the bottom. Three of our signatures are now attached to the inner spine of our future journal and we can keep on working on the cover. For the cover I'm going to need two pieces of medium weight chipboard and these will both measure 11 and a quarter by 4 and a quarter. I will also need a piece of cardstock for the spine and this time 11 uh, inches long cardstock will not be enough since our cover is longer than that so for the uh, spine I had to use a 12 by 12 um, sheet of cardstock and cut my uh, piece um, off of that now as far as the scoring goes on that cardstock piece that we're going to use for the spine of our book I'm going to score it first at one inch on the short side from the left then I'm going to flip it and score it one inch again and then I'm also going to score at one and a quarter flip the piece again to how it was and score at one and a quarter okay and then this will give me the uh, spacing of one and five eighths of an inch between the inside two score lines so I'm going to flip my cardstock piece like so and score at every one eighth of an inch that area between the two score lines that I have shown you. Now we'll need to fold our piece and I'm going to fold the side flaps which are one inch wide and make sure that you have your curve facing this way when you fold your flaps in and then I will also use the second score line which is a quarter inch away from the previous one and also 
create the fold. Okay. So our covers are going to attach to this piece right next to the uh, quarter inch uh, gussets. I thought that for the um, tall journal, I want to try that technique. That will actually give us a little um, gap between the actual cover and the edge of the book spine. Now I'm going to assemble this cover separately. I will wrap the uh, spinal piece with fabric and then I will also independently wrap each one of the front and back covers with fabric as well. And then we will connect all of them into one a whole cover. I'm going to start with the covers and then uh, take care of the spine. So for uh, creating the covers, I'm also going to use the ivory uh, colored um, muslin or cotton you're welcome to use. I'm going to um, apply glue and I'm using glue stick to one side of the chipboard cover. Then I'm going to attach my fabric on top, just making sure that I center it nicely. Like that. Now I'm going to iron this area like that. Now I'm going to uh, wrap the long edges of the fabric and glue them down to the chipboard. When the long edges are glued down to the chipboard, I can move on to the short edges. And for taking care of them, we will need to trim some of the uh, fabric axis. So I'm going to trim just a bit along the very edge of the chipboard. And I suggest that you use uh, your sharp scissors for this step. Now I'm going to trim off this piece like so at a little angle. So that here we have a little bit of the fabric going um, at an angle like so. Okay, do the same on the opposite side. That's how it needs to look like. Okay, now I will actually take my wet glue and add a tiny amount of that glue um, close to the edge and then fold it like so. You will have sort of a triangular uh, fabric fold in that corner. And let's do the same thing here. Okay, and that way you also cover the corner of the chipboard with the fabric so you can see how it will look like once everything will be folded over the chipboard edges. Let's do the same with the opposite pair of corners. Here we go. And once again, let's just make sure that everything looks nice when folded. I think it does. So this cover, or I'd rather say cover base, is done. I am going to do the same with the second cover piece. 
And there we have it for now. I'm not gluing these short edges to the chipboard just yet. We will do it later once we have our uh, spinal section ready. So let's get to it now. We have this piece of cardstock that we have scored and folded. I'm also going to use fabric for making it more stable. And I have a piece of the same fabric that I used for the covers, but I painted it with blue acrylic paint. And I did it ahead of time because it needed to fully dry before we can continue. I will include the uh, picture with the colors of the paints that I used. I mixed a little bit of the blue paint with just a tiny bit of uh, brown paint and also diluted both of them with water and then used that mixture for uh, painting my fabric. The reason why I used blue because on some of the pages there is blue um, tone and I thought that, uh, although it's a steampunk, I don't want to have everything in um, the shades of brown. So I think I am going to use um, maybe somewhere inside um, the journal on the pages uh, some of the green colors too. And on the spine, I wanted to have this blue. And then I also plan to use these papers on the covers of my journal. So if this is going to be the front cover and then this is going to be the spine, we could later on add some brown uh, colored accents and also distress the spine or maybe even stamp something on it and altogether it should look nice. So that's the plan, at least for now. You have already seen how the album turned out, so I almost envy you. But right now I'm clueless as for where it will take me, but that's the idea so far. So I'm going to use this piece of fabric for um, attaching it to the uh, cardstock piece and uh, create the spine of my book this way. I don't need this whole fabric piece. I think I'm going to trim it. So first of all, it will need to be a little bit longer than the length of um, the cardstock piece. And uh, it also needs to go only maybe three quarters or uh, a little bit more than half an inch more than um, the first score line on each side of this piece. So if I measure and then create a little cut and tear the fabric, sorry for the sound, I think we can add some stamping to the blue fabric first and only then attach it to the cardstock piece. I realized that I didn't have a lot of uh, steampunk themed stamps. So let me just show you what I am going to use on the spine of this book. These are some old stamps, so I'm not really sure if you will be able to find any of them. So I'm going to use some of these uh, cogs and um, maybe even the word steampunk. This set is by Graphic 45. I don't remember how exactly it's called, but these are the stamps which were included in it. I also am going to use maybe some of um, these stamps and they were by Stampendous and that's the name of the set. It's called Steampunk. I also have these hot air balloons. I'm going to use them somewhere um, either on the spine or maybe on the um, or maybe on the pages of the journal. Uh, although it's not 
<laughs> related to Victoria Designs, but I uh, thought that I'm going to show you which stamp exactly I'm going to use. I already wanted to start stamping, but um, then decided that I am going to attach the fabric to the paper first, and this will allow me um, to better understand where exactly I need to place each one of the stamps. I think it will be easier to do it that way. So I am going to um, do exactly the same thing that we did before. I will apply um, some glue to the paper and then attach my fabric to it. Make sure that I heat set everything and only after that once I have a full understanding about where each one of my folds is and um, up to where um, the uh, fabric reaches on those folds, I will go ahead and stamp. To add even more distinction to the folds, you can go ahead and use your Distress ink on them. And I also think that I'm going to sew along the short sides, both at the top and at the bottom. I also want to rub some of the paint and ink off this fabric piece. And I'm using just a, a very old sanding block that I have. Um, you are welcome to use even nail file or just a piece of um, sandpaper. Now I'm going to stamp. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. Let me show it to you closer. Again, any steampunk themed or steampunk theme looking stamps in your stash that you have could work for this. I'm sure you will be able to find something to match the steampunk style, even stamping just numbers or um, some background text stamps is going to be awesome. Now I'm going to move back to the covers that I have started working on before. I will need to cut the paper pieces for the front and the back. And I have already started to show you what I want to use. This pattern, I think, is going to work nice for the front of our journal. And I think it will even be enough for the back cover too. Let me cut it to the size and get back to you. Okay, so I have cut the papers to the size and let's think about it together. So both of the papers measure 10 and 3 quarters by 3 and 3 quarters. I went ahead and uh, distressed the edges of each one of those pieces. Now let's have a look. If we glue them down to our cover, you can see that the borders that we're going to have will be quite wide to my taste. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer of paper and I think I'm going to use craft and the uh, craft matting paper piece will have to be a quarter of an inch wider on each of the sides. That means that it will have to be 4 by 11. Here are two pieces. Let's have a look again at the cover with the additional piece of paper in there. Yeah, I think this will look better. So first of all, you can see that I have distressed the edges of the craft uh, paper layers. And I'm also going to distress the edges of these chipboard pieces, which are covered with fabric. And then it all should look 
even better. So at this point, we can go ahead and glue the uh, paper layers together. And I will also go ahead and glue this whole panel to the back cover because I don't plan to have any special embellishments on my back cover uh, in general. But I do um, think that I might add something to the front. So with the front, I'm going to wait and uh, the back paper panel can already be glued down to that uh, chipboard cover. I'm still not very sure what I want to have on the cover, but I think I um, might have an idea, so I will try and do that. I have uh, printed this page design, and I want to use this lady on the cover. I think I'm going to fussy cut her out. So I'm just roughly uh, cutting her out from uh, the whole page and now I will have uh, straight edges on the left hand side and at the bottom but I will try to follow the outline of her clothes and uh, body and fussy cut her out I'll trim this edge as well. Now, if I will want to use her uh, right here in this corner of the cover, she blends in too much with the rest of the background. That's why I think I will glue her down to the craft cardstock. I want to use this kind of closure with the magnetic button. This piece is one inch wide and in my case about five inches long. I need to decide where the second part of the closure will be on the cover, but I think I can do it later. And right now what I want to do is I want to add this lady to the cover and I can also glue uh, this paper panel down to my uh, front cover of the journal. What I want to do now is attach the front and back covers to the uh, spine and wrap the fabric at the top and at the bottom and I will show you how I do that. So you remember that quarter inch gusset that we left? that's when we are going to need it. So we will apply the glue and I'm using here just some um, tacky glue because again I plan to use my sewing machine as well. I need just to make sure that the parts stay together at this um, moment. So I'm adding the glue to the flap and I will now add the uh, front cover to the piece which will be used for the spine and I'm just making sure that I leave that quarter inch gap between the fold of the spine and the cover itself. I have uh, the fold there so it helps me and guides me as to where I need to position my cover piece on top. I will add the sewn line right here along the edge of the pattern paper. And here we go. This is how it works. I remind you that you should increase the length uh, of the stitch to at least uh, three millimeters or even three and a half. I uh, uh, increased it to three and a half right here so my stitches are quite long and that's because we have quite a thickness here of layers. Um, I'd suggest that you create a similar sandwich if you are not uh, really sure of 
uh, the abilities of your sewing machine. First, create a sandwich of the same thickness and try to stitch and see how it goes. Don't stitch on um, fast uh, speeds and always try it out first. Um, I have uh, already tried different thicknesses of different materials so I know uh, my machine and um, it was able to uh, deal with this thickness that I have right here. At this point I am going to attach in the same way the second uh, half of the cover and it has been done too. We have two um, stitches on the cover and our cover starts to get shape finally. Now what we need to do is to add some glue right here and glue down the flaps, the fabric flaps at the top and at the bottom. They will also cover parts of that uh, paper which is seen from the spine. Once you wrap all the edges you can add the ink on the inside of the cover as well just to make sure that it all looks the same also on the spine and that's our cover so far i'm still thinking about the ways of embellishing the spine we need some accents here so for the accents that i um, think that i'm going to use I will add some little prads here and there. I will add some uh, rhinestones in gold shades and uh, use the super glue for attaching them to the fabric spine. It just adds tiny accents to the spine and it looks way better in my opinion. I have stitched where I wanted. I had to deviate from a straight line a little bit on this side so it's really nice that the pattern on the paper is quite busy and it's not very visible. This mishap right here. I think that right now I want to um, add the pages and glue them down to the cover. Our flaps were one and a half inch wide, if you remember. That means that to find a perfect placement for our signatures and attaching them onto the cover, we will first need to measure one and a half inch from um, this fold on the spine. So we have a quarter inch gusset uh, right here, so we don't take it into our calculation and start uh, measuring one and a half inch from this section on the spine here from this fold okay so I will measure one and a half inch here and one and a half inch here so that I could connect both of the marks and have a guideline that will help me line up the flaps of the signatures when I'm ready to glue them down to the cover. And I will do the same on this side. Again, I'm measuring from the fold in there, one and a half inch. Okay. And from the fold, one and a half and connect both of them so that we can better see up to where our signature flaps needs to reach. Let's rotate the cover. Make sure that we have it all in the correct orientation. And now I will 
add the glue to this flap and line the edge of the flap with the guideline that I have created. I will also uh, bear in mind that I will need to leave about one eighth of an inch um, from the edge of the uh, signatures to the edge of the cover. Okay, at the top and at the bottom. And before we add the glue, let's just make sure that the threads are not in the way. So I will add some glue and just glue them down uh, closer to the inside of the cover and not to the edges of it. I will add the glue to this flap here and line up the edge of the flap with the guideline that I have created, like so. Let's wait for a couple moments till the glue starts to set in. I think we can also snip the corners right here just a little bit so that the white paper doesn't show too much under the um, next set of papers that we are going to add to the insides of our covers. So I will snip the corners like this on this flap and also on this flap and here I'll do it before I glue everything down. It will be easier. All right, I have added the glue and now I will just hold the whole signature stack with my hand and even the cover can also be folded so that we can reach with the edge of um, the flap um, the guideline that we have created on the back cover and once the glue starts to set in we can release and just make sure that we burnish everything nicely and glue everything together and this is how our cover will look like so far we are ready to work on the embellishments on the pages and this is the next thing i'm going to uh to do off camera i worked a little bit more on the cover of the journal and as you can see i have added the metal gears along with the die cut gears that i created using the gold foiled paper and a die that i had in my stash i also added some um, images from the paper collection um, i punched out um, those images using a circle punch and then i a layered an epoxy sticker on top and then I also added this lady that I showed you before and I didn't glue this element with her all the way to the page so that I could use it as a tag spot for um, two tags that I have also cut out from the paper collection. I have secured the metal gears with the help of uh, little brads and I poked the holes through the chipboard cover so they're uh, securely attached to the front cover of the journal. I have also embellished the pages with the same gears that I have die cut and I have die cut a lot of them because every page uh, in the journal has some of those gears. You can see that I have used stencils on the journaling pages and after that, I just went ahead and glued down to the pages all of the elements that I had uh, from the paper collection. On some of the pages, I have added clear windows. It all depends where the inspiration will take you. I have done all that after I stitched all of my signatures to the binding. I just can't work in another way. I need to have the pages attached to the book so that I could know what I want to do with those pages. I usually don't sew any ribbon or trims to the edges of the pages. That's why it's quite easy for me 
to work on embellishing the pages of my journal after I sew them down to the spine. Right now, I want to work with the inside uh, front and back cover. And for that, I have prepared a few um, layers of paper already. So the uh, craft papers that I have here measure 11 inches long by 4 and 1 eighth of an inch wide. And I have distressed the edges of both of those pieces. I have also printed this pattern from the paper collection. And um, although the design is horizontal, I think it will be fine for us to use it vertically because we will be adding more elements and pockets to the insides of the front and back covers and the direction of the pattern will be less important for us. So both of the pattern paper pieces measure 10 and 3 quarters by 3 and 7 eighths and I have also distressed the edges of those. On the inside of the front cover I still don't know what I'm going to do but I already have an idea for the inside of the back cover and once you glue both of these pieces together they will serve as a background for two additional elements that I want to have on this page and they will be two envelopes that I uh, plan to place here one at the top and one at the bottom for the base I took a piece of craft cardstock and this piece measures eight and a quarter by four and three quarters and you can see that I have already scored it so um, the first score line was at three inches then I also scored at three and one eighth and at three and a quarter then I scored at six and a half six and five eighths and six and three quarters I folded all of the score lines but added distress ink only to the uh, two side score lines and that's the width of the gusset that I want to have. I added the score line in between the previous two so that if we don't put anything very thick inside the envelope and it squishes down between the pages of our journal, this score line will just ensure that our envelope or pocket still holds its shape nicely. I uh, also used my envelope punch board and shaped the corners of the flap right here. So just punched one corner and then the other corner. Now I want to use another piece of pattern paper and that's the pattern um, that I chose. It measures two and three quarters by four and a half and closer to the bottom of the pattern but in the back of this piece I have created uh, the guideline which is three eighths of an inch away from the edge from the bottom edge of this paper and I also created two guidelines uh, on the left and on the right and they also stand at three eighths of an inch away from the edges. I uh, did that because I want to create an opening uh, in this section of the envelope and for doing that I'm going to use a punch, a circle punch. To make sure that I don't punch too far in I need those guidelines. So I'm going to use my um, three quarter inch punch and I'm going to line it up with the guidelines that I have. So I am making sure that on the left hand side and at the bottom there I line up the opening of the punch with the guidelines. Now I can punch out the first time and I'll do the same on this side now lining up the edge of the punch with the guideline on the right hand side and at the bottom like that and next I will need a self-healing mat a ruler and a craft knife so that I could connect 
the uh, two circles and cut out that excess paper that is between them like so and this way we're going to get a nice looking opening without any dies super easy now of course I will distress the edges of that opening and now we need to punch the same shape of the opening in our uh, craft cardstock base. For doing that, I think I will add some glue, but very little, just tiny drops of glue in the corners of the pattern paper. And now I can uh, just make sure that I uh, center this piece on top of the craft cardstock area that I'm working with. And I will secure the paper on the craft cardstock. I will even add some clips. And now I need to punch again and make sure that now I line up my punch with the opening that I have created before that. And I will punch through the craft cardstock only like so okay now we have two punched out circles here i will trim this paper piece between two circles like that here we have the opening in both the cardstock and the pattern paper and now i want to add uh, i think i will go with some uh, tracing paper because it's not very thick and I think acetate will be too thick for this so I'm just going to trim the excess that I don't need and while I still can line up everything nicely I think I will secure this piece on top of the cardstock with a clip and then add the glue around the opening and I will add the uh, tracing paper on top. And now I can glue this whole piece to the craft cardstock. This tab will serve as a closure. So first of all, I need to make sure that I uh, put it in the right place. And I'm going to use both glue and then brads for the accents uh, to hold the tab on the surface of the envelope. I will add the glue to this part of the tab only. I'm going to glue it down to the page, well, somewhere in the center so that I can tuck this flap behind the tab and then it will hold it nicely together. This tab measures um, two and a half by uh, three quarters of an inch. I just used my envelope punch board for shaping the corners of this tab. The gold foiled paper is backed with the craft cardstock just for more stability. When the tab is attached to the base of the envelope, I'm going to poke two holes in it. One here and one there. And add two breads. Next, we need to uh, add the sides here to our envelope. For creating them, I used two pieces of craft cardstock, and each one of them measures one and a half by three inches, and they're scored at half an inch, three quarters, and one inch on the short side. Both of them are the same. Once you have your score lines, you will first fold your piece in half along the uh, central 
square line and then you will fold the flaps out to get the um, shape of the letter W or the letter M depends how you look at it but these now will have to be attached to this section of the envelope by their flaps and you will start to glue them down from the top corner of um, your envelope like so. I'm going to add the glue to the flap. And glue it down. Do the same on the opposite side. And now we can glue these flaps. But before we do that, before we seal our envelope, let's add a piece of clear tape in the back so that it covers the prongs of the bread. And we can um, slide something inside the envelope without any troubles. Okay, so I'm going to add the glue to these flaps. You just need to make sure that the edges of the flap and the envelope are flush. Okay, and once you line everything up, you can, of course, burnish. That's one envelope. In the very same way, you will need to create the second one. Here is the envelope that I have created. Both of them are the same. And we can attach them to our page. First of all, I will glue the pattern paper to the craft cardstock. And now I will glue it down to the inside of the back cover in the journal. Make sure that you glue the paper really nicely here where it is getting close to the fabric closure in case you also have the fabric bent closure like I do. You could also create a button closure with uh, some kind of a string or maybe you could use a hitch fastener and some elastic uh, string instead of creating this closure. There are so many options. It all depends on what you have in your stash. But if you also created a fabric or maybe leather band closure like I did, just make sure that you glue all of the layers down together. So I am going to glue the envelopes down to the page and I think I will have about a quarter inch borders from the edges of the envelopes to the edges of the pattern paper. And then there will also be about half an inch between the envelopes themselves or slightly more. Apply the glue to the back of each one of the envelopes and attach them to the page. And here are both of our envelopes attached to the inside of the back cover of our journal and it of course added to the thickness of the journal too and we have um, allowed for that by leaving three-eighths of an inch gaps between the signatures and the fold of the spine. Now we have to work on the inside of the front cover and I will start by attaching the pattern paper to the craft cardstock piece and then I think I want to just have three pockets on this page. Each one is smaller than the other. The one at the very bottom will be four inches tall, then the one in the middle will be three inches tall, and the one at the top will be two inches tall. And I will attach them to this piece of craft cardstock and pattern paper prior to gluing the whole thing to the inside of the front cover. So let's begin with creating the pockets. You will need three pieces of craft cardstock for them. 
and the largest will be five and one eighth by four and a half. Then the middle one will be five and one eighth by three and a half, and the smallest will be five and one eighth by two and a half. We will need to use our scoreboard, and I want to begin with the largest piece on the five and one eighth of an inch side. I will score at half an inch and then on the four and a half inch side I will score at half an inch again. So we will have only two score lines on this piece and we will do the same on the remaining pieces as well. So on the longer edge I'm scoring at half an inch and then on the short edge I also score at half an inch. Let's do the same here. We will need to trim the corner at the intersection of those score lines and I'm using my self-healing mat for that. We have a perfect 45 degrees angle cut right here. Now you can fold the flaps and we will wrap those flaps around the craft cardstock piece that we have and before gluing the flaps to the cardstock I want to use my bone folder and just make a line right against the edge of the craft cardstock piece here. So that will be the line. I can use it for folding the paper and creating that additional flap. And now I'm going to put the paper piece on top of the self-healing mat again. And I will trim the paper corner off like so. It fits super nicely on top. Now we want to create maybe a notch in this pocket, right? So I think I'm going to use my envelope punch board for that again. But before we do that, let's measure what should be the size of the pattern paper that we want to use on top for matting our pocket. I think three and seven eighths by uh, three and three quarters could be nice. Here I have um, the paper piece ready and that's the pattern that I chose. We are going to create the notches in the craft cardstock base and in the pattern paper. That's how I put that piece on top of the punch board. I will line up the left hand corner with the mark of one and a half inch and punch. And then I will flip the paper piece like so and once again line up the corner with the same mark and punch. We will now need to trim the excess paper. Let's just re-ink this area. Let's take care of the pattern paper piece. Let's make sure that we have it in the right direction. I'm lining the corner not with the one and a half inch mark, but with one and three eighths and punch and then flip and punch again at one and three eighths. Let's trim this little tongue. We will need to re-ink and we can glue this paper on top of our pocket base. This pocket is ready. We will repeat the process and create the middle size pocket and the smallest size pocket. All of our pockets are now ready and we can start attaching them to the page. Now for that we will uh, take the largest piece and we're going without any problem attach it like that to the page by gluing down the flaps. That will be our first pocket. I have attached it only at the bottom for now. 
for attaching the uh, middle size pocket we will need to make some measurements and for that we will of course need a ruler and a pencil so i'm going to measure three quarters of an inch from the top edge of this pocket so from the craft cardstock base of the pocket and I'm measuring three quarters of an inch and I will make a mark on the paper like so and the same thing on this side so that everything is even now I will take my second pocket I will apply the glue onto the bottom flap of this pocket only and now I will keep the side flaps open and I will mount the whole pocket on top of the craft cardstock base like so okay and I will match the corners of the pocket with the tick marks that I have created and then I will burnish so by doing that I actually attach the pocket by the bottom flap to the page like so I will repeat the steps with the same measurements for the smallest pocket now I want to unfold the middle size pocket and add some tape on top of that flap this will make it super easy sliding tags or cards inside the pocket they will not catch on the paper edge here inside the pocket i will do the same thing here on top of the flap of the smallest pocket i think i want to add some labels with the brads to each one of our pockets and only once i'm done adding the labels and i'm done securing them with the brads i will cover the prongs of the brads in the back with the clear tape and only after that I will glue the side flaps of each one of the pockets in the back of the long craft cardstock piece. I must say that applying glue to such long panels definitely takes some time. Okay, now I'm lining everything up, making sure that I have even borders at the top, at the bottom, and also in this case on my left hand side, and just burnishing here you can add some cards to these pockets and basically the journal is now finished these are some of the elements that i'm left with from the cut apart sheets so i have the file folder i have a long horizontal pocket i have one of file folder pockets and this label one of the trains a suitcase a smaller suitcase this empty label and the spectacles now i think i can just tuck some of those in the pockets and maybe use them later when i'm ready to uh, fill this journal out so some of the elements can go inside the pockets and from some other elements i think we could uh, create journaling cards or um, atc cards whatever you wish 
or maybe with the spectacles I actually do want to use them I think I could create just a plain uh, journaling card and glue them down at the top edge and they will be like a tab on the journaling card that's just an idea I think I'll do that a little bit later but um, yeah I think I am going to use them at some point this is uh, what we have created today. I hope you like the collection from Victoria Designs and see you soon in the upcoming videos.